Hey y'all and welcome. If you're new here, my name is Amber. On my channel, we primarily talk about handbags and accessories, but also cover a wide range of other items to let you know if the quality matches up to the price tag or not. So if any of that sounds good to you, then stick around and let's hang out. Today's video is a Timu haul. No shocker to anybody there, right? I have a few dupes in this one. I have some random household items. I have a little bit of miscellaneous. I have a little bit of all of it. As always, my direct link and discount code will be linked in the description box below. I'll also flash the discount code up on the screen for you really quickly. And that's all I have to say. Let's get into the items. The first one, while it may seem very random, is this little plushy stuffed animal. So it's past my daughter's bedtime, so she couldn't join us for this one. And I cannot remember for the life of me what she called this. Let me scooch over so I can put the Timu listing up for you. But she called this an Inu something. I really and truly can't remember you guys. But I was really just going to give this to her. I wasn't even going to show it. But if any of y'all have kids or grandkids and they are into the Squishmallows right now because my daughter is obsessed with them. They are she has a collection of probably close to 50 of them right now. She absolutely loves them. So, if you have kids or grandkids that also like the Squishmallows, this thing is just as soft as those. And if you know what those are, you know how soft they are. So, this... I don't know if there were other characters or not. You would have seen the Timu listing by now. But it's this little doggy... And he has a zipper on the side, so you can unzip him and add more stuffing if you need to, or I guess unstuff him and wash him, or I'm not entirely sure, but he has a zipper. So, just wanted to point that out. He's got a cute little mean mug and face, but super cute, super, super soft. So, that is item number one. Next item up is another one of these egg pans. So, I have previously purchased one of these. And I'll put the Timu listing up for you. This is the handle. It comes in two pieces. You just screw it in. But I have previously bought one of these and I had asked y'all to help me figure out how to flip the egg in it. Well, I figured it out. Somebody in the comments had, um, had told me that there was a really thin, pliable spatula on Timu that worked really great with this. Well, I already had one. It was like a kind of a mini spatula that was really thin and flexible and that worked great with this. You just kind of run it up under the edge and, you know, flip your egg over. Well, my mom was over for breakfast a few weeks ago and I used this to make our eggs and she loved it just as much as I did because you get a perfectly little round egg to make your breakfast sandwich with. So, she fell in love with it, so I ordered another one to give her one. So, this was the second item. And this does have some, like, weight to it. It is not cheap and flimsy. It feels like, um, like that stoneware type stuff, if you know what I'm talking about. So, I really, really like it. I've been really happy with it. Works great. The next thing that I ordered was a black eyeliner, and you're probably not going to be able to see a thing through that, so let me just open it and we'll see how it does. Okay, so under the wrapping, that is the brand Bobini, Bobini I guess, is what that says. And then it's just, whoops, an eyeliner pencil. So it is just a, just a roll-up eyeliner pencil. I cannot use liquid eyeliner to save my life. It just turns into an absolute mess. So there's how it did. Just using the tip of it, I got a darker, skinnier line, of course. And then if I turn it on its side, it went flatter and more broad. It's not the darkest black that I've ever seen, but it did go on really kind of smooth and creamy. So I think for like a buck, it's worth it. Okay, next up is a hoodie. Now, I feel like this says Essentials, and I feel like this is a brand. I'm not 100% sure, so let me put the Timu listing up 
for you really quickly. They did have a few other colors, unless this has been discontinued already, because yes, a bunch of you all have been asking me if I've noticed everything being discontinued and all of that. And yeah, I have. I don't know what is going on. I did reach out to my contact at Timu, the person that I talked to, and um, I haven't heard back yet. So I don't know what the deal is with everything getting discontinued like that so quickly. But what I'm going to do, because I do still have some items here that I haven't shown y'all yet, and I have a feeling, because I have two boxes of designer dupe handbags over there waiting to be filmed, and I have a feeling that several of those are already going to be discontinued. So what I'm going to do is, hopefully you've seen the other Timu video by now, and there were a couple of items in it that were discontinued, and I tried to find some sort of substitutions to show you guys. So I guess for right now, until I get through the items that I already have, that's probably what I'll try to do going forward is find some, some sort of alternative, some sort of a substitute for these items if they're discontinued. That's really the only thing I know to do right now, but hopefully some things start coming back or I at least get an answer soon. And y'all know that if I hear anything or I find anything out, I will let y'all know. So this is the hoodie and I, I, I do think this is a brand. Now, let me try this on and I'll show you what it looks like because I'm not 100% on this one. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of slowly stand up and let y'all see what this looks like on me. But I'm going to try to describe to you how it feels. Have you ever picked up a hoodie or just worn a hoodie that came from somewhere like the dollar store or one of those kind of big box discount stores like um, not like Burlington or anything like that but there's one close to me that's called bargain bin and there's another one a few towns over called Ollie's and I've seen these types of sweatshirts in there so they're extremely lightweight like they don't like they're feather light but they have some thickness to them and it makes them kind of stiff and they don't move with your body the best it just feels kind of cheap if I'm being honest with you but I haven't washed this yet so I don't know if maybe it'll soften up and loosen up a bit in the wash so it won't be so stiff but it's not stiff in a in the way that we would normally think of it it's more just like the fabric I guess just kind of wants to stay in place because it's so lightweight that there's nothing to kind of pull it down and form it around your body if that makes sense I feel like I'm just rambling so let me show you what it looks like on me so, do you see what I'm saying about, like, how this fabric just stays sticking out wherever it was? It doesn't, like, it doesn't fall down and mold to your body. It just, you know, if it's up or whatever, it just stays up. So, I don't know. I mean, it's soft. It's not rough. It doesn't have a rough texture at all. You can see the inside feels... Well, you can't feel it, but I mean, it feels soft. It's just so lightweight that it, like, I look like a linebacker <laughs> with, with my shoulders looking this broad. I look like I could just whew, hulk and take out the whole lineman team. I don't know. I'll let y'all know. I will wash this before this video goes up, and if a wash softened this up and made it less stiff I'll put a green check mark if after a wash it's still the exact same I'll put a big red X so we'll go green check mark red X on this one but this is the hoodie okay the next item up is a skirt so 
I'm going to put the Timu listing up really quickly so y'all can see that. You can see in the photo the woman looks beautiful. The skirt is a long skirt, but it looks beautiful on her. It just looks like a nice, summery, flowy skirt. Now, clearly she is tall because I'm only five foot two, and when I tried this on earlier, it was dragging the ground. But I actually really like this. <laughs> And I'm going to show y'all how I'm going to wear it, what I'm going to do with it. And don't y'all dare make fun of me, okay? We got to do what we got to do when we're short. <laughs> okay, I had to put a black tank top on so you could see my full kind of vision here because it just looked ridiculous with the shirt that I had on. And I kept my pants on because I was too hungry to take those off as well. So just ignore all that. But what I have decided to do with this skirt is that I just roll it down. It has an elastic waist in it and it's super stretchy, super comfortable, super lightweight, flowy, all of that. So I just roll it down until it hits somewhere around my knee length and it's just a cute little skirt. So I'm going to stand up and show you. And I've decided that when I wear it, I'm going to pair it with a black tank top because I got it to wear in the summer in Kentucky where I live. It's always extremely humid. So tank top and a flowy skirt, perfection for summer. You know what I mean? So I'm going to stand up and show you. Now, for full disclosure, I have to roll this down 12 times to get it to where it's at on me right now. So just in case you're curious. <laughs> But this is how it looks when I roll it down a bunch. And like I said, it's super flowy. It's super comfortable. Yeah, I kept my pants on, so just ignore that. But when I roll it down around 12-ish times, it's... Actually, it's still well below my knees. So I could still roll it down some more. And hey, I have no hips, so I am not curvy. But with this black tank top, the little roll at the top of the skirt makes me look like I have a little bit of hips. <laughs> the next thing I picked up was a pack of scrunchies. So let me pull these out and I'll show you what's in here. Okay, so I just slid these up my arm because it was the easiest way to show them to y'all. But I think you get a set of 12 and you get two of each color. These are kind of like a faux satin feel to them. You can tell by the fabric, you know, what they feel like, but they have a really good amount of stretch to them. They're not super loose or anything like that. I like them. You got like a bronzy, a blue gray, kind of a silver, a darker charcoal, kind of a greenish, silvery gray, and then like a dark blue maybe. So this one does have a stray thread on it, but, well, that just came out, so the quality on them looks really good, and I will insert the Timu listing if I haven't done it already, but these were super inexpensive. So if you have long hair, or you have a daughter with long hair, whatever, definitely recommend these. They are worth the price, for sure. The next thing I picked up was one of those little shower drain hair catcher things. So it came sealed up, of course. I just went ahead and took it out of the package. But this is what it looks like. So I'll put the Timu listing in. And it's supposed to catch hair in your shower or your bathtub or what have you. My daughter and I both have decently long hair and we both shed something awful. And these were super inexpensive, so I figured I would pick up a couple to put in our bathrooms around our house. And we'll see how they go. I've already put the other ones that I picked up in the bathrooms. So we will go green check mark, red X. If they worked, green check mark. If they didn't catch anything, red X. The next item I picked up is totally random, but this is a leg pillow. So I'll put the Timu listing in really quickly. I am a side sleeper, full stop. I can't sleep on my back. I can't sleep on my stomach. I have to sleep on my back, or my side. I just said I can't sleep on my back. What is wrong with me? But I have to sleep on my side, but I cannot stand my knees rubbing together. I know that may sound crazy to some people, but it is just the most uncomfortable thing in the entire world for me. So this is kind of um, sealed airtight. So let me cut it open and we'll see what it looks like. But there's the photo that was on the front. And then here is what was on the back. And then when I cut it out, it definitely did fluff up. So it has a zipper. 
So that's good. You can take the cover off and wash it, which I was a little concerned about because you want to be able to wash pillow covers, you know. But, so you can take this all the way off, pull it out and wash it. It looks like some sort of just foam and it has holes in it for airflow. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I haven't tried it yet, so we will do the usual green check mark red X if I liked it. Green check mark if I didn't like it, red X. Next up is something that came in this completely smashed box. And this entire order was shipped to me in one of the big bags, of course. And this is what I'm always talking about. It's not necessarily that the items aren't packed well to begin with. It's just that through their journey from wherever they start at until they get to you, if they're in one of those big poly mailer bags, they just have no cushion, no protection. So they get thrown around everywhere that they go. They get smushed under other packages and parcels and all of that. And your items just end up arriving like this. And for full disclosure, this is a pair of foldable sunglasses. I had never seen foldable sunglasses, so I had to pick these up and try them. But when they arrived and I opened the box, one of the lenses had popped out of this from, I'm assuming, being crushed. I was able to pop it back in, but generally speaking, sunglasses I've had in the past, if one lens has popped out, it'll continue to do so because it's already gotten loose. So we'll see, but I was able to put it back in for now. I'll show you what these look like on me really quickly. I don't know if these are really my style or not, but they were foldable sunglasses and I had never seen those before, so I had to get them and try them. They did come in a few different like color variations or options, but I went for the, I guess the brownish version. So, so here's what they look like up close. And then each side folds in and down like that. And then they fold on down and fold up in the middle. If I can keep a hold of them and fold them the right way. But I thought these would be great for smaller handbags if you're somebody that likes to keep your glasses, your sunglasses in your handbag. Where you can fold them, they would take up a lot less space. And hell, you could probably even fit them in like a little coin purse. So, had to pick those up and give them a try. Next up was a pack of socks that I ordered. And these are like the no-show socks that you wear with shoes that you don't want to show your socks with. <laughs> you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pair. So there's one full pair on each of these. So you get two of each color. And I didn't realize this when I ordered them, but it it doesn't really it doesn't bother me. I actually think I kinda like it. But these are almost kind of like mesh, like see-through mesh. So you can see my hand through there. And I'll put the team listing up if I haven't done so already. But this part across the top and the bottom is kind of like meshy. And I assume that's for breathability purposes. Um, I don't mind it. I kind of like it. I'm one of those people that I cannot wear shoes without socks. I just can't do it because in my mind I always think like, oh, what if my feet sweat and then that just gets stuck in my shoes and I can't ever get it out. So I have to have socks and I love the no-show look with my shoes. So I think these are going to be fine. I think they're going to be good. Now, if you're somebody that likes um, like a really thick 
good cushioned arch support in your socks or anything like that. Obviously, these aren't going to work for you because they have those mesh sections for breathability. But I think if you're somebody that can use and be comfortable in those really thin no-show kind of socks because you just want a barrier between your foot and your shoes, I think these would be a good option. So we'll go red X green check mark. I will try these out before I edit this video and put them up. If I like them and I still feel comfortable in them, you know, with just this between my foot and my shoe, green check mark. If I end up hating them, red X. <laughs> okay, I think this is the last item and then I have two handbags to show you. And this is a jewelry item. It's a pair of earrings and Typically, I don't go for jewelry that has a lot of color on it for some reason. I tend to stick to mostly silver, gold, rose gold, just like your typical metals without a lot of color. I don't know why. But I saw these and I thought they were so pretty that I had to have them. So let me take them out and I'll show you. Okay, I kind of regret my decision getting these. I still think they're beautiful, but I think they're... Let me just show you. Okay, so I'm going to show you the team listing. And the pair that I picked out looked... Well, I guess that's right. In the brighter light, I guess I can see the purple a little bit more. But it, uh, where it was darker over here, they looked more like just brown and turquoise. But I thought they were really neat, really different. Now, when I was just looking at them a second ago... I kind of don't like them now. Let me show you why. Can you see how that is designed? There's no hinge. Like, this will move back and forth, but the post part of this, there is no hinge. And the part that goes through your ear literally just goes up and around the back. So what am I supposed to do? Just pry it open like am I literally just supposed to pry it and then push it back or just leave it like that I guess well I guess I could just leave them like that that would probably work I don't know where it was just pushed down it was a little bizarre I don't know I'll try them out one of these days in a future video and we'll see if I like them or not but I do still think they're very pretty with that mixed color, almost kind of like stone look about them. Okay, on to the two bags that I have to share with y'all on this one. Now, the first one I'm about to show you, I almost didn't even want to show you because it has already been discontinued. However, there is another version of it. So what I mean is the one that I picked up is no longer available but the exact same bag in just a smaller size is available. So I'm going to link the one that is the smaller size for you because this one that's a little bit larger is not available anymore, unfortunately. So it came in a little dust bag like this with some handles, but nobody cares about that. And I have shown this style bag before, but this one is different because this is another Balenciaga City Bag dupe. And I'm going to show you the listing for the smaller size, but these are real leather. So the ones I showed before were faux leather, obviously. And I have shown what the City Bag looks like over and over and over, so I'm not going to put that photo in this time. But... This is real leather and you can see like it's got a grain to it. It's so nice. It's got some weight to it because it's real leather. The faux leather ones that I showed y'all, I still love those. I still think they are fabulous. Especially in the last listing that I showed you with the newer colors. But there's something about a real leather handbag that you just can't beat. You really can't. Now this is probably just the top what's it called top grain leather where it's essentially just leather on the top not all the way through and it's put on a backing but I I just don't care real leather has a look and feel to it that you just can't beat you really can't in my opinion 
but this has all the classic features of the city bag with the exception of they went ahead and gave you a pocket on the back with a zipper just for convenience the zippers are all super smooth oh and what i was going to say about the faux leather is that the faux leather version i've been showing y'all it's a smooth faux leather it it feels great. It really does. The faux leather that they use feels amazing. But this, like I said, you can see the texture to it. This one, to me, gives that really, really worn in, like, true motorcycle bag vibe to it because of the leather, if that makes sense. The faux leather ones I like purely because they're so cute and so functional. This one actually gives me the vibe of what the city bag is so you have the zipper pocket on the front and again this one is functional it's a little bit larger i don't know how big it is on the mini size of this bag but i'm sure it's still a functional pocket so your two handles here are just a rolled handle but they do feel nice they're not structured in the sense that you can't you know move them but they're structured in the sense that this leather gives it some structure. It's not just going to fold up on you and leave a big indent. And then on this one, of course you get, you know, the rivet detailing and the oversized zip pulls and all of that. And then on this one you have a double zipper pull. So it comes with the adjustable removable strap. Y'all know straps are where I get really fixated a lot of the time because a strap can tell you if a bag is cheap real quick. This one, this one feels really good, y'all. It's not overly thick, like it's not super thick, but it has a really nice edge coating on it. It is a buckle adjustment, but look at that. You got that extra keeper bit to keep the tail laying down flat. You have gunmetal hardware several adjustments it just this feels quality it has a little tiny bit of weight to it so it doesn't feel super cheap let me adjust it out and we'll see how this looks crossbody so i didn't adjust this one to the absolute longest um setting or the furthest hole because it was really really close to the end of the strap right there and i just i don't know i didn't want to put it that far down if i don't have to but the strap's good. It's got the swivel hardware, everything. Even your lobster clips on here feel good. They're not super heavy, but they're nice and chunky. They feel robust. So on the second to longest setting, oh yeah, that'll totally go crossbody. No problem. This is probably about a 21 and a half to 22 inch strap drop maybe a 22 and a half but this fits great so i'll put it on the shortest really quickly and we'll see where that falls so in total you get six different adjustment holes which is pretty good for a buckle adjustment you typically won't get that many but let's see on the shortest hole that's where it hits me crossbody so i would not do that at all but on the shoulder, that's a great long shoulder bag length, in my opinion. It's not, you know, down to your knees, but it's not up in your armpit. Like, it's just the perfect spot to rest your hand on the front strap. So that's a great length, in my opinion. I know I've shown these bags before, but where this one is from a completely different seller, this one is a real leather bag, and it does have a few differences. I do think it's worth showing you what this is like so on the inside the front of the bag right here you're gonna get a slip pocket and it is finished with a little edge coating at the top so you can differentiate it which is nice and then on the back side you have a zipper pocket back there if you can see that and then other than that you just have a really decent amount of space in there and one other thing I did want to show y'all is that the way these bags are constructed is on the ends, you have a hole right here. So if you don't like this zipper flopping over the end, 
then you can take both zipper pulls and you can pull them in toward the middle and you can take these tabs and you can tuck them down inside the bag so that they're not sticking out and your zipper is still fully functional you just don't have as wide of an opening and you're gonna have to grab the end of that somehow to get a little leverage to get it zippered back closed but it's just an option that you can tuck those ends in to just give it a cleaner look on both ends and you could also trim these if you didn't like them being so long or whatever you want to do but I just absolutely adore these bags this style is one of my favorites so I had to share this with y'all and if you can do a mini bag or one that's a little smaller than this one I think this one was about nine and a half inches and I think the next size down was about eight inches maybe so if you can do roughly an eight inch long bag then I recommend grabbing it now okay and then the last bag that I have to share with y'all is a dupe for a pull-in bag so I'm sure if you enjoy handbags and you've been watching a lot of other handbag channels and what have you that you've heard of pull-in at some point. Now, I forgot to do my research before this video to tell you which pull-in bag this is, but of course I will show you the Tima listing and then the pull-in listing. So, it comes in a little dust bag as so, and I have it upside down, but... This is the little bag and it's kind of smushed so don't be don't be too harsh on it but it's a little smushed from shipping of course so you should be seeing the Timu listing this was available in a few colors I hope it hasn't sold out already but now I'm gonna put in the photo of the pull-in bag that this is duping so in the photo you should be able to see that the pull-in bag has a little kind of scoop with these ridges that come out at the bottom down here right there and right there and this bag has those as well this is just one of those um, little leather tabs so just ignore that but this is 100% a dupe for that pull-in bag and it's a pull-in numero something because all of their bags have number names but this is just so daggone cute. It Let me unstuff it and I'll show you the inside the best that I can. Okay, so Pullen has made its rounds through handbag YouTube, if you will. And they have really become known for their quality leather bags. They have a very minimalist style. They don't have huge logos. They don't have tons and tons of details on most of their bags they focus primarily on folding leathers into unique ways from what I've noticed they have some more classic shapes that have straight lines and straight edges but they do have a lot of bags that they fold their leather to give it an interesting look so if you see the ends of this you can see the leather is folded to create this pleating detail on each end. And that is really what Pullen is known for. Is this folding and pleating detail on their bags. So, like I said, don't hold the fact that this one got squished against it with a little TLC and some stuffing and a little care over a few days. This will pop right back out into shape. But you do have little D-rings here on each end because this does come with a crossbody strap. So we'll try that in a second. Now, the one thing I have noticed like when I was stuffing this to try and push some of those first initial wrinkles out is that this handbag style is not the most user friendly. If you can see, the top handle sits directly over the opening. So to get things in, you have to get in under this and then go down. And it's not like it's a huge chore because this leather does flex and pull and all of that. So 
you can pull it open and have enough space on either side to get your hand in there. It's just not nearly as convenient as, you know, opening a zipper and just going straight in or um, just like an open tote or anything like that. So you're not going to be able to get huge, big, bulky items in here. Like here's my cell phone case. To get this in, I'm going to have to go from the back and then turn it. And then to get it back out, I have to come back out the back side and pull it up and out. So if you have this really jam-packed full as well, you may have to contend with that and, you know, squiggle and fiddle your items out. But if you don't carry a whole lot or you don't carry a lot of big bulky items, this would be perfect because it's gorgeous. So the closure on this is a mag snap and it works really, really well. If you can see there, those magnets are on two little tabs so they come together and they will catch. So you do have, you know, some, some space where you can poof it out around that and put your things in there. So I'm going to try to so show you the inside of this. So on this back wall, if you can see back there, you have a slip pocket. And then on the opposite wall, you have a zipper pocket, if you can see that in there. And then other than that, you just have wide open space. And the space does go all the way down to both corners. And this bag does have a good depth on it as well. So, you know, you have a lot of depth here. It's not a super skinny one. So you can get items down in there. You just have to be cognizant of this top handle and getting in and around it. So I still think it's gorgeous. I picked it up in the, I think it was called elephant gray color. Let me undo this strap and we'll look at it. Okay, so we have a buckle adjustment strap and you get one, two, three, four. You get five holes. They didn't get this one punched out all the way, but it's there. So you have one here, one there, two, three, four, five. And this is a thin strap, which kind of surprises me because this is a leather bag. So it's got some weight to it. I don't know if I mentioned that, but this is real leather. So it's not, you know, the lightest. You can see that grain and that texture to it. It feels like a good quality leather. Also, I noticed with this strap, it has a raw edge, if you can see that. So like a suede type edge. And if you look at the very end here, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this or tell, but it does look like they have put two pieces of the leather together there to create the strap. If you can see kind of that like line of demarcation there, that's what it looks like to me. That may not actually be two separate pieces. That may just be top leather, bottom leather, and then some sort of filler in the middle. Looking at it like this, I kind of, Maybe that's what it is. But either way, the strap has a raw edge. You do get a keeper with this one, which is a plus. Then you have gold hardware. So let's just adjust it and see how it looks. So I am going to go with the longest setting on this one and see if it will go crossbody. Okay, so on the longest strap setting... This is where it hits me. I'm not a big fan of that. This length is fairly short. I would say this is probably about uh, maybe an 18 to 19 inch drop at its longest. So this is this is not my favorite for a crossbody. But I really don't think that a bag that looks like this is going to be your best option for a crossbody anyway going to look much better as a little shoulder bag or personally in my opinion a little handheld you can kind of let's see if it were snapped together and it were full eventually I kind of feel like this leather would sag a little bit so you could sort of do crook of the arm I can't get it all the way up my arm 
but I could get it far enough that I could carry it like that fine. Or I would just top handle carry it. Just, you know, just a little top handle bag. So let me put this strap to the shortest length and we'll see how that looks. Okay, so at its shortest setting, this is where it hits me. That's not, I don't know. The little D rings and where the strap is and stuff is not the most comfortable to me to like hold like that like I normally would with a longer shoulder bag. That's just not my, uh, that's just not superbly comfortable, but it's, it's cute as a long shoulder bag. My personal preference would have been for them to include a really beautiful gold chain strap with this that had the leather break at the top for you you know, to sit on your shoulder so it was more comfortable with that gold chain with this. That would have looked stunning. That would have been absolutely gorgeous. Or they could have given us two strap options and given us that gold chain with the leather break at the top. And then they could have given us like a chunky guitar strap that matched this. Because I think that kind of juxtaposition between this really elegant kind of handbag and then a chunky sportier guitar looking strap on it would have just been cool you know what I mean it would have just been a different look unexpected but anyway that is the last item for this haul both of the bags that I showed y'all today were real leather bags so keep that in mind because they are a little bit pricier for Timu they're like in the 30 something dollar range but I would absolutely say that they are worth it in my opinion they they're beautiful quality they the they're they're worth it they're just worth it but anyway that is everything for today's haul a bunch of random stuff that i've picked up lately i hope that you guys have enjoyed this if you have any comments questions or you just want to say hello then as always please leave me a comment down below because i absolutely love chatting with you guys and thank you so much for spending some of your incredibly precious time with me today and i'll see y'all in the next one Bye, guys.